praise be Jesus in Mary. He came to his own, and his own received him not. The Gospel tells the story of Jesus' rejection in Nazareth, the town where he grew up. No prophet is welcome in his own country, Jesus says. But the problem is broader than just Nazareth. Jesus perceives his rejection by most Jews and by much of mankind. One of the things that offended the people of Nazareth is that Jesus did so many miracles elsewhere instead of doing them in his own town. So Jesus reminded those gathered in the synagogue this was nothing new in the history of Israel. He chose as his examples the two Old Testament prophets whose lives are most full of stories of miracles. There were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, but it was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in a foreign land. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. Why did, they, why did these prophets do these miracles for the benefit of foreigners instead of for their own people? St. Lawrence of Brindisi answers that, that this was not because Elijah or Elisha lacked the power or goodwill to help them, but because the people themselves were lacking faith. In the first reading, we heard the story of Naaman. He was afflicted with a terrible disease that was considered a curse of the gods and, and which only they could take away. So that's why the king of Israel reacted that way when he got the, the letter. He was being asked to do something that only a god could do. So it seemed to him like just a, a pretext to start a war. Naaman received a benefit that no Jew received, in part because of the effort with which he sought it. He made a long journey to a foreign country, and he was ready to pay a high price to obtain healing. He brought with him really a fortune in order to, to uh, convince the prophet to help him. Although the prophet didn't want his money, he doesn't work, he works for God, not for, for money. Uh, just as he was about to be cured, he stumbled. And when he was told to do something that did not match his expectations, but, and so, you know, if it's enough to wash in a river, all I have to do is, is you know, go and do this ritual of going seven times into a river. Why couldn't I do that at home? Why did I have to come all this way? Don't I have better rivers at home? And so, fortunately, his servants convinced him to, to change his mind. He did it as he, as, he asked, as he was asked, and his flesh became like that of, of a little child. And so free from any, uh, uh, any signs, any scars from disease or from, from war, you know, things that were so common then that, that perhaps you know, it was mostly on the skin of a, a little child that you could see uh, pure skin with, with no scars. And the key to his healing was his humility. This su suggested that God allowed him to, uh, to fall into that, uh, or not to, to fall into that sin, but con to contract that disease because uh, he needed to, to, uh, to conquer his pride. Uh, so you can easily imagine that as a great commander, winning many victories, praised by his king, praised by his soldiers, praised by the people, he could easily uh, become pride, become proud, and that pride would then be an obstacle to his salvation. Leprosy was a great humiliation and was something that he was powerless you know, for all his strength, for all his, his cleverness in, in battle. He couldn't do anything against leprosy. So first he humbled himself a, a first time by acting on the advice, advice of a little serving girl. He humbled himself a second and decisive time by washing himself in the Jordan. And now that he had overcome his pride, he could receive healing. The purpose for which God had allowed his illness had been fulfilled. And so it was time for him to, to, to be healed. And so consider how that applies to the case of Nazareth. They were unable to accept that someone they knew personally as the humble son of a carpenter might uh, have something to teach them. They lived in a small town where everybody knew everybody else. And so, you know, for their whole lives, or at least for, for 30 years or so, they, they knew everything about Jesus, or at least they thought they did. So how could he, he really be, could he really be so different from, from the, the boy they'd always known? No, how could he presume to teach them if he'd never studied? They knew perfectly well that he hadn't studied like the rabbis had. So who is he to, to go around explaining scripture? 
they were envious and for, for themselves and for their town, and this envy led to anger and to an attempt to kill Jesus. We can also you know, think briefly about, uh, about that widow. We didn't get the story of the widow, but um, perhaps you know that uh, you know, uh, during the famine it was very hard to find food, and uh, even the, the brook that, uh, in, in the wilderness that uh, Elijah was drinking from uh, dried up. So he had to go somewhere else, somewhere, uh, and he went, oh, and then God told him to go to this, this foreign city. And there he found uh, a widow who was, was about to, to make one last meal before she died. Uh, and he, he asked her for some food, uh, which you know, she couldn't really, really give him. But nevertheless, she trusted in, in the prophet's word and the prophet's promise that, that uh, God would ensure that the food would not run out for them. Uh, and so it was. Uh, so you know, God sent him there because there he could find someone who had faith, someone who could, could trust even at the, the risk of their lives in, in, a, in the life of her son, which perhaps was even dearer to her than her own life, uh, could, could trust that uh, God's word would be fulfilled. And so it's, uh, it's faith that saves us, it's humility that saves us, it's uh, an, effort to, to, uh, an effort to seek out salvation uh, that saves us. And where these, these efforts were lacking, as they were uh, in Israel in the time of these prophets, uh, where people sort of went the, the easy way and, and easily uh, worshipped idols because that was what everyone else was doing, uh, there was not found someone worthy to receive these miracles which were done instead for, for foreigners. So there again, in Nazareth, you know, Jesus was there. It wasn't that Jesus didn't want to save them. It wasn't that Jesus didn't want to help them. It was that they didn't want to be helped because they, they were unable to imagine that Jesus could be uh, really uh, the Messiah. Naaman's cleansing is also a figure of baptism. The liturgy reminds us of this by choosing a responsorial psalm which is, has been associated with the, the baptismal liturgy uh, since the first Christian cent centuries. Sin is a, a kind of spiritual leprosy. In, uh, in the, the Jordan where Naaman washed is where Jesus uh, uh, had himself baptized in order to institute baptism. So sin is a kind of spiritual leprosy and baptism cleanses us from every stain. It makes us like a little child, like Jesus, Mary's little child. This figure of baptism invites us to reflect on how we, we receive the sacraments. The sacraments have the power to heal our soul, and in some cases even our bodies, but they require faith, and faith presupposes humility. Pride, on the other hand, leads to rejection of God's plan to save us. Nehemiah also made a great effort to obtain healing. He didn't sit on his hands, he didn't just send a messenger, he went in person and was ready to, to spend whatever it took. So are you willing to go out of your way if you have to in order to receive the sacraments? This might be the case, especially if you're traveling. How much effort do you put into preparation for Mass and, and confession? Or do you even go to confession regularly? God wishes all people to be saved. And many are lost because they make so little effort uh, to, to overcome their faults and, and to obtain or and to seek God's saving power. Let us not be like the, the people of Nazareth or those uh, of Israel in the time of the two prophets, but rather like Naaman and, or still more, like the saints, a thirst for the living God. Praise be Jesus and Mary. Now and